Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and today we're going to have a look at the national hurricane forecast again today because we've got a very significant development with Marco and Laura, the two tropical storms soon to become hurricanes um, entering into the Gulf of Mexico. Now currently they're the only two sort of disturbances in the Atlantic Ocean, the disturbance that was towards Africa, the tropical wave has now sort of diminished. Um, so at the moment, it looks like once these two pass through, there'll be at least a lull of maybe a few days to a week between any other tropical systems that might develop. So at least that's some good news, but it does look like there's going to be a double hit in the Gulf of Mexico. But we'll have a look at Central Pacific. Uh, there's no satellite data today, unfortunately. I don't know why there's an issue with that. Um, but anyway, there's a small chance of a tropical cyclone developing. It's moving northward, so it could start to impact Hawaii, but with a low chance formation, It'll most likely just be a few thunderstorms, uh, maybe, if it gets to Hawaii in the first place. We'll have a look at the eastern Pacific. we have got a couple areas of interest here. It's been quite active in the eastern Pacific so far this hurricane season. We've got a disturbance too with a 20% chance of formation, 70% chance in the longer range, and it is likely that it's going to be moving up the coast towards southern tip of California and the northwestern tip of uh, Mexico. So running along the coast, bringing probably a lot of thunderstorms, uh, maybe some significant winds around, but again, uh, we need to have a, uh, a better look at that once it develops, because again, it can be quite uncertain on the track. We've got another chance of a disturbance. So it's got 50% chance in the short range and 80% chance in the longer range. It's going to drift off the coast of Mexico, um, so it doesn't look like it's going to impact land in the uh, near future, but something again to keep an eye on. But the big thing we've got to be talking about today is going to be soon to be Hurricane Marco and Laura. So first we'll have a look at Marco. Um, so we'll have a look at its forecast track. So currently it is out in the uh, in the Gulf of Mexico, not really near any land, and it is intensifying quite quickly. Overnight it's gained about 30 mile an hour worth of wind, and it's now gusting at around 70 miles per hour. Uh, which is uh, only a few miles per hour short of Cat 1 Hurricane. So it's expected to turn to Cat 1 Hurricane as it moves towards New Orleans, which can be quite a dangerous scenario there with quite low-lying areas. And we'll have a look at the storm surge and the rainfall potential in a minute. But if you have a look at the track, it does move towards Louisiana and maybe turn, turns the left turn into Texas. So at the moment, it does look like it's going to be making landfall near that New Orleans uh, Louisiana coastline. Um, where it goes from there is still a bit uncertain, but it does look like it's going to be turning sort of uh, more westwards, uh, so moving more towards Texas. We could find an enhanced risk of thunderstorms uh, and still pretty pack a punch when it moves in there, but it does look like it will die quite quickly as it goes over the coast. It doesn't look like it's a huge system at the moment, but it's packing quite a punch, so uh, it's definitely something to need to keep an eye on, especially if you live in those areas there. I've got the wind speed probabilities, and you can see we've got this line of wind speed probabilities here, and this is enhanced by uh, soon to be Hurricane Laura as that moves in a similar track, and it could produce the Fujiwara effect, um, which I highlighted in my video yesterday. It's looking a bit uh, less, it's looking less likely right now that that's going to happen. The time frame's kind of shifted to about 36 hours between them, but there still could be some impacts um, from them, uh, from them moving together, which could slightly alter their intensity and their track. But at the moment, we definitely have a good good indication of what happens to Marco, which is what happens to Laura. It's going to be uh, going to be interesting to see. So if we have a look at hurricane winds, uh, this, it's because it's only forecast to be Cat 1, Cat 2 at the moment. The hurricane winds are quite a uh, small area and low percentage chance, only 20, 30, 40 percent chance. But I'm assuming that's going to increase once it does strengthen to hurricane because at the moment it's not a hurricane so this is still forecast but once it does strengthen to hurricane i do suspect that these will get quite large uh, large areas uh, consuming most of southeastern louisiana if we have a look at arrival time winds you can see that monday monday morning um in central time um and it's going to be moving up, maybe making that as early as 2 a.m. on Monday, but most likely Monday at 8 a.m. So when you wake up on Monday morning, be some intense conditions out there, especially if you're in Louisiana. 
keep an eye on those uh, early reasonable uh, arrival times as well, because we'll have a look at Laura in a minute, and you'll see that that's only a couple days behind, maybe even only 24 hours stay behind, uh, 24 hours behind. But we'll move on to the peak surge. So as you can see right now, four to six peak, which is quite substantial. But considering that uh, Louisiana and New Orleans is quite a low-lying area, these can be very significant surges. And you can see they're even moving inland to some of the lakes and little inlets because it's such a low-lying area that any whip up of the waves could provide some coastal flooding. And there's quite a substantial uh, storm surge warnings. And if we have a look at those right now, um, you can see quite substantial storm surge warnings, storm surge watches for a lot of the uh, uh, New Orleans sort of areas. So it does look like we're going to be seeing a direct hit on Louisiana. US rainfall potential is not too significant at the moment as it remains fairly offshore. Um, but as it moves in, it's likely to be around 6 to 10 inches for the New Orleans uh, area in Louisiana. Does look like it's sort of an eastern based storm for most of its convection, so that's why there's significant rainfall still for parts of Florida uh, and the eastern side of the storm. Although a lot of the storm surge and wind potential will be down this sort of western part of the storm along here into New Orleans, so very significant impacts with the storm. It's quite a small storm at the moment, so it's not going to be providing hugely wide impacts. A lot of rainfall though, so. Something definitely uh, needs to take action if you are in southeastern Louisiana. Could it could be? Uh, I'm not going to guarantee it, but it could be a Hurricane Katrina similar scenario. If Laura takes a similar similar path with looking at destruction wise and uh, impacts, so definitely one to take action on now if you're in those areas. We'll now have a look at. Tropical Storm Laura, or soon to become Hurricane Laura, it's not a lot, not as much info on it yet because it's it's not impacting, uh, it's it's not guaranteed to impact uh, mainland USA yet. So a lot, a lot of the info hasn't been generated yet. So that's something we'll have to look at um, soon. But if we have first a look at warning and cone areas, you can see quite substantial risk to the Caribbean over the next few days with tropical storm warnings. No hurricane warnings yet because it's only looking like it's going to intensify as it reaches the US coast. Again, looking like it's Louisiana, Texas, maybe Mississippi. Um, again, it's moving north, where as Marco is moving probably a bit more westwards. So at the moment, there could be a double hit for New Orleans, which would be very substantial and could provide a lot of damage uh, to this coastline, especially as it's low lying. By the time Laura hits, uh, with this current forecast, I wouldn't be surprised if the waters from Marco hadn't subsided yet. So yeah, this storm is a lot bigger. If we have, if we will go back and have a look at the, uh, if we have a look at the uh, satellite images, you can see that's Marco there, and it's quite a eastern-based storm. You see a lot of convection on the eastern side, whereas Laura is a much more whole-rounded storm, and it's a lot bigger. So if it does get going, winds could be more widespread, and rainfall could be more widespread as well. So that's something to keep an eye on. If we have a look at the wind speed probability, you can see right now uh, significant winds for a lot of the Caribbean. It's not uh, got huge probabilities for the US coast yet because it's still a few days away. Um, but those will probably pick up in the next day or two as those percentage chances increases. We'll have a look at arrival times as you can see as we, as we highlighted. It was Wednesday, uh, sorry, Monday morning. We were looking at uh, the arrival of Marco and Laura is Wednesday morning or Tuesday night for the Louisiana coast, Mississippi coast, Texas coast, depending on exactly where the landfall is. But given it's quite a large storm, I'm expecting, even though landfall might not exactly be in Louisiana, there's still going to be significant impacts in Louisiana. So that's why it's looking like it's going to be a double hit for New Orleans and Louisiana, which can provide some very significant and dangerous impacts. So anyway, thanks for watching, um, hope you enjoyed the video, uh, and if you are in any of the path of these storms, do be aware, even though it's only a tropical storm at the moment, and only forecast to be a Cat 1, maybe Cat 2 uh, storm at the moment, it's going to provide some very significant impacts if it, it, when it hits low-lying areas. Um, so please 
be aware uh, and take the necessary precautions and listen to your local forecasters and national forecasters as well. But anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed uh, and subscribe, subscribe if you're new and I'll see you again for another video.